Welcome to Accommodations and Modifications. This is the last video in support for all, and I think a nice wrap up with lots of resources for teachers. I am your host, Nicole K. Rod. My email is there, and I would love for you to reach out and chat about these topics. Um, I'm an MLTI ambassador, and when I'm not an MLTI ambassador, I am a seventh grade science teacher at Mount Ararat Middle School. Um, joining me today will be Rob Dominic, another MLTI ambassador. And then on this page, I also have the link to the bit.ly for this presentation so that you can have access to all of these wonderful resources, as well as the MLTI YouTube channel for a lot of videos and professional development around many topics. Today we'll be talking about accommodations and modifications. And the way I'm gonna set this up is kind of give you a glossary of terms to talk about where accommodations and modifications may be needed. Talk a little bit about UDL, Universal Design for Learning, and tools that you can use for that. And then of course, wrap up with, with lots more resources and tools that you can use directly in your classroom around accom accommodations and modifications. So let's start with a glossary of terms, student needs. These are places where you may need to have modifications and accommodations. So I'm gonna start big and kind of narrow down. And so let's start with universal design for learning. There is a link here to my last video, which gives you an explanation and some resources around this, but it's thinking about and planning for the variability, the differences that you know are in your classroom. And so um, planning ahead and meeting those needs um, regardless of, of who is in your classroom. And then, Differentiation is also a stem of this, but it's more thinking about, okay, here's a small group that I'm going to directly address their needs. It might be by content, process, product that you're differentiating. Um, so, so thinking about those uh, flexible grouping and using the data to push students forward. And again, I've linked a video here from the first video in the series. RTI, response to intervention, as well as, I'm gonna skip over to the right, MTSS, multi-tiered system of supports. These are very similar. And what this is, is RTI is a three-tiered system that really focuses on instruction and thinking about um, your whole group and then a smaller group and then the students that really need those interventions to, to get them to move forward. And then multi-tiered system of support is a framework. It's thinking about um, addressing students with behavior, SEL, um, in, in an inclusive and equitable learning environment. And really, to do this right, you're harnessing what schools already do and have in place, and you're organizing those structures so that the whole school can meet all learners. Uh, accelerated learners, this is a group that we, um, when we think about accommodations and modifications, we don't always include this group, but our gifted and talented students also need some of those accommodations so that we are giving them full access to the curriculum. And then uh, an IEP or special education. So this is an individual education plan um, where a student who's been identified with a disability receives specialized instructions. This is where, when we think about accommodations and modifications, this is what we think about along with a 504 plan, which is also to ensure that a child who has disabilities is, um, they're identified under law and receives accommodations. So those are places, all places where we could use accommodations and modifications. So let's jump into universal design for learning. So designing for variability, knowing full well that we have students in our classroom that are all different, whether it is based on ability, um, gender, culture, backgrounds, language. We have so many things that we're planning for and our, our differences in our classroom. If we're planning ahead of time for those, what could that look like? 
So again, universal design is planning for that uh, variability, thinking about um, planning, um, teaching, learning products and environments to meet those differences and eliminating barriers. I've included here the UDL framework um, and also the video that goes into this more in depth as well as a, a toolbox. And then I really wanted you to have resources for you to use. So I've taken the UDL toolbox, which is a list of strategies and given you some resources around just a few of those so that if you need something in your classroom for an accommodation or a modification um, ahead of time that you're planning your lessons and you're thinking, oh, I'd really like to plan in a brain break. What, what's a resource that I could use? These are here. UDL is broken up into kind of three pieces, engagement, representation, and expression. Um, engagement is all about pulling kids in and keeping and sustaining their um, ability to stay with the curriculum and their perseverance. So um, you could see there's a variety of tools here, brain breaks, choice boards, graffiti boards, student inventory. Some of these may seem really familiar and some of them don't. I encourage you to kind of check. Um, this is an overwhelming list. So the way that I would approach this is still think about like, what do I need to do in my classroom? I'm not trying to do every single one of these. Choose one and say, I'm going to try this. Um, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, disregard it and move on to something else. Representation. So you've got things like concept mapping, world, word walls, manipulatives, read alouds, back channel chat. Um, and then expression, thinking about the ways that your students are able to show what they know. So um, maybe you're using a menu option like blended learning, learning or um, your students have access to speech to text so that that way they, um, they can use that as a, a accommodation. Um, sentence starters, something to get them started if they're, they're struggling. Um, you're also thinking about how to slowly release this so that it's student ownership. So thinking about goal goal setting or student to-do list, things that are helping them so that they're working towards that independence. And then accommodations and modifications. So an accommodation is um, things that are used in the classroom in order for a student who may be struggling to access the general education curriculum. Accommodations do not change the content, vigor, standards, or grade level of the material that is being accessed. So when possible, when a student is struggling, we want to, to push toward the accommodation side because a modification does change the content, the vigor, the standards of, of grade level. I've just gathered a lot of resources around this. What's really interesting and I found is that there's a lot of lists of accommodations and there's not a lot of how do I do this? What accommodation should this child have? And I don't think that we have that training as general ed teachers to um, accommodate for students unless you've been doing it for a while. So I would encourage you to reach out to your special education teachers and work with them to modify your work, work for students. I'd also encourage you to look at that UDL design. So how can you really empower students to say, this is what I need to help push my learning forward and giving those the, giving them those options ahead of time. Um, and then also, you know, following IEPs, but trying things out like it, will this tool work? And then getting feedback from your students. How did that go? Was that helpful? And so this list of resources, I'm just gonna go through it and kind of talk about different things and look at it so you can see what I have here. So the first resource that I have is an accommodation crosswalk. So what I've done is I've taken um, lots of different accommodations or modifications, and I've given you a list of tools that might help to, um, to address those in your classroom. Again, using these proactively, also thinking about like, how do I document this so that I know and ensure that students are using it? Um, so here is, 
kind of what this looks like. So if I'm, I'm just going to pick one. So if I'm doing something like, um, providing small group, uh, or individual assignments. So thinking about stations um, or thinking about branched Google Forms where you're breaking it down. And then in order to document that, um, you'd put it right in your lesson plans. Or you also have a Google Form if you, you used that. So I hope this is something that um, will be helpful as you're, you're planning your lessons and, and thinking about those accommodations for students. So next up is Chrome extensions. And this is where we're gonna talk with Rob Dominic, and he's gonna go through some different Chrome extensions that will help you provide some accommodations or modifications for your students. Hi, I'm Rob Dominic. I'm an MLTI ambassador, and I'm just going to cover very briefly, very quickly about what Chrome extensions can do for classroom accommodations for both teachers and students. Um, if you're not familiar with Chrome extensions, they are like little mini programs that can run in your Chrome browser. You don't have to download them to your laptop. So they may not be as powerful as a spreadsheet uh, application or a word processing that's on your computer, but they still do a really good job about with their little mini programs that they run. They are stored up here in your browser. Once you install them, and if you don't have them at all yet, that's fine. They are found in this puzzle piece at the bottom, manage extensions. Now, if you have them, they will be located here and you can turn them on and off with that button. I do recommend, you know, toggling them on and off depending if you're going to need them or not, because if you have a lot of them running, it does bog down the browser. Um, and it can slow it down because some of them, you know, even though there are many programs when they add up, some of them do take a lot of browsing and computing power. So if you don't have any of them on here, no big deal. You can go to these three lines and you can go to the Chrome web store. Now there's other ways to get the Chrome web store, but that's just the easy way that I can just click, click, click and get there. <clears throat> and then I can search and install them. So <clears throat> extensions for accommodations that you have, it could be for individual students. Um, I be honest, I find that more often than not, these extensions can be used for many students, um, you know, in their own in their own ways across the board and even for teachers as well. The slideshow that I'll kind of outline about extensions for you will be available through uh, the resources that Ambassador Nicole Kerod, uh has for you um, in the in the uh, comments below the videos. So you can get to this as well and you can have access to the links and such. I'm going to skip ahead. <clears throat> and to me, there are, you know, a, a few topics of useful extensions, speech to text and text to speech, customizing web pages so that they're easily readable for students, uh, resources to summarize content, resources to be able to make navigation easier for students, you know, maybe there's a PT and OT type situation going on. Then I've also highlighted some teacher oriented um, extensions that could be really useful for teachers and then, you know, kind of things that that do everything for you. So I'm just gonna go over a few of these very briefly and let you explore the rest once you get the hang of it. So the speech to text and text to speech is a few on here that are notable. In my opinion, read aloud is one of them. And if you click this link, it'll take you to the Chrome Web Store where it's located so you can install it. Mine's already installed here. Um, so it doesn't say to uh, install, it says remove. But this, you know, if I go to a website and I have the extension up here, right here where it is, it will read aloud the text. So if I'm going to search, let's say ancient Greece, And I'll go to the history. <clears throat> if I'm here and I click the read aloud button up top. It will start reading aloud. And then there are settings here where I can change it, right? It was a little bit slow, so I can change the speed, make it a little bit faster. Um, you can change the voice, make it sound more natural. There are extensions like this that will do translation as well for students. Um, 
on my on the slideshow here I have one that's kind of got this metal piece out of all of them I like that one the most because it, it has the most amount of features so on here if I wanted to highlight this because I have it installed already I can go click on this immersive reader by right clicking I can get to it and it will open up that same information in this separate browser and this is this one is backed by Microsoft actually so it's pretty reliable and then get rid of this ad I can play it it's a little more natural there's lots of options here for the text to be able to uh, increase and change the text and what it looks like there's grammar options where you can highlight you can highlight different pieces and have it show up you can do syllables there's lots of customization customization that can happen through here but I'll leave you to play with that or to inquire about more later um, so that's what that extension does right you can have it read aloud you can have it translate you can change the the coloring so it's easy to read there are, are also extensions through here that will customize the web pages so like this post light reader if I go back to this agent grease and I click the post light reader right here and it's grayed out so it was right there I just didn't see it it will take that information from that website and it'll put this put it in like you know kind of like a Kindle format almost make it a little bit easier to read notice how it took out the ads that were kind of being annoying um, it took out a lot of the graphics that could get distracting and there are some other customizations not a lot but there are some others you can do on this as well so that's another thing that you can do with these extensions, right? It can change how the website looks to you, the user, so that way it's easier to read. This helper bird kind of does the same thing. Ublock Origin will get rid of ads. You can help clean up web pages so that it's easier for students to read and then copy and paste and interact with and even take notes. A lot of these get, can get pretty deep and helpful with that. Summarizing, there's a couple websites and, and um, extensions that will help summarize content for students so if that's part of their problem with understanding and it's too much text you can use those to be able to uh, pare it down so it just simplifies it for students and then these are really cool especially this lip surf you can make it so you can just speak to your web browser not your whole computer but just your web browser and have it navigate for you without having to use your mouse or anything you can just use your words to say click on this go to this website and it will do all that scroll up scroll down all those pieces teacher oriented ones just to show you real real quick um, moat is an awesome one you can see it's installed on mine up here and it's integrated into the um, Google slides Google Docs all of your Google products it's right there um, it's basically voice commenting so if I wanted to leave a comment on something um, whether it be a Google Doc or um, cool slides here I can use it with moat right here and click on that and I can leave a voice comment and you know using voice and your own verbal feedback can be a lot more effective for students than just the written piece so there's that piece of it page marker this is one that I just like to use a lot especially being a former math teacher and going to be math again after this ambassador gig I can just write over a web page so if I'm doing a video I can just write over it without anything happening to it and then clear it out right it's just like it's painting over the top and then I can get rid of it though um, so I can write stuff out for students when I'm doing a video and make it easier for them to see what I'm talking about <laughs> and then the all-in-one text help is a great company that does a lot of these extensions and they're really really robust uh, read and write is an exceptional one I have on here um, and then Equatio is another one up here for math. I use that as well. Um, okay, so yeah. Um, it allows me to insert math content into um, documents as well. Read and write, it, it does all those other things we talked about. It'll read aloud, it'll mask a screen so you could highlight only one line at a time. It will change color backgrounds um, highlighter you can take notes it, it does a lot of great stuff but again I would encourage you to explore it and then reach out with questions um, after you check it out and see how it is 
So again, to get to those, look for your puzzle piece, go through manage extensions, you'll get to this tab, and then you can open it in Chrome Web Store. And then once you get a bunch of them like this, you'll be able to turn them on and off as needed. I do recommend though, if you're looking for some on your own, I do recommend, I say here's a read aloud one, checking to see obviously the reviews, right? The ratings. And sometimes those ratings, you know, they're just off, you know, for user error, error instead of the actual product itself. Um, but I'd read about, you know, who it's backed by, what, where its uses are, and also when it was last updated. That's a big key to me if it's going to be, um, you know, usable in the future and if it's going to keep up with things. Uh, this this uh, post light reader, as it's called right now, um, that was called Mercury Reader. And before that, I think pretty sure it was called Rocket Reader. Um, so the updates get annoying because it changes the name all the time. Um, however, at least I know if it's getting updated, that means that people are paying attention to it and it's keeping it running instead of just getting left behind and uh, depreciated at that point. So I do recommend checking to make sure that whatever extension you install has a reasonable enough update date on here. Okay, so again, that's a really quick overview, but please feel free to dig through things and experiment and install. You won't hurt your browser by installing and uninstalling those. Um, see if there's ones you like. Ones you don't like, there's plenty more options out there as well, but feel free to check out these recommended ones first. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Rob, for all of those resources. And I'll link Rob's presentation. It's here in this, but it's, I'll also put it in the description of uh, this video. So next is a social emotional learning website that I found that has a wealth of um, resources. So we're going to click on that. I'm just going to show you. This is called um, Social Emotional Learning Be Good People. And so if I'm looking at um, kind of that tiered approach again, so let's look at I'm looking for tier one kind of whole school wide instruction, look on some middle school. It has I mean, look at all of these great things. Um, and you can kind of see they're broken down and asking questions, showing respect, volunteering, and you can click on any of these. Let's click on managing stress. And it's gonna bring you to a great um, presentation that you can use with your kids and different activities um, and just engaging things. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then also it offers the tier two piece. So if we're looking at four or five, we've got more um, kind of individualized interventions. So thinking about, let's see, managing stress. So you've got a whole bunch of pieces. So taking that first presentation that you had and then breaking it down into even more pieces for your students to use. So that's a pretty valuable website. Next up is just a list of accommodations broken down into different needs. So when I'm looking at this, um, 500 accommodations for 504 plans, sensories, IEDP, IEP, PDF list. So there is a video and different things, but if you scroll down, um, it breaks it down into, it has a, right here, there is a, you could print this and it just has so many resources of just, hey, have you tried this? So thinking about uh, language-based uh, specialized instruction, uh, people in peer-based, sensory things, behavior, um, and just gives you a, a large list. And I just thought that was valuable for looking at, um, you know, planning ahead. How can I, I have these behaviors in my class, or I have um, students that, you know, may have, uh, struggle with ADHD, can I put these things into place? Next, thinking about our English language learners. So this had another wealth of resources going through. It had, um, again, scroll down, it said lots of different websites to go through and look at with, with a lot of different resources for lesson plans and uh, different activities that you could provide for your students. PBIS World, I loved this. 
so I had to include it. It literally takes all those tier one interventions or tier two or tier three, and it gives you a list. And then the way that that list is set up is fabulous. So if I'm thinking about giving my students a break, I'm gonna click on this. Why should I do it? So it's kind of thinking about like, oh, when should I provide this accommodation? Um, or why should I? And then when should I do it? How should I do it? And then alternative methods. So I really liked this because it really made you think purposefully about giving, um, in this case, a student a break or giving an accommodation and, and the when, why, and how. Next up is thinking about those gifted and talented learners and how can we address and accommodate for our advanced learners. So this was a great website that kind of walked through um, different interventions um, for thinking about gifted and talented students and then provided a lot of activities. So whether that's grouping, whether that is um, problem-based learning, special ed program, things like that that will help to um, address those learners in your classroom as well. And then the last one was just more UDL resources from ISTE. This was a nice tool where there were 30 plus tools for diverse learners. And I just loved uh, some of the things that it, it provided and talked about Plicker, Socrates, Pear Deck, um, just different. There's a ton of tools on here that you can go through. And that is my presentation for you today. It's there is a lot of resources here, so I'm hoping that after you watch this video, you'll click in the description and you'll go through some of these resources and see what's valuable for you. Um, a place to start may just be to, to go through and look. Um, that's okay just to kind of look through what's here. It's also okay to go through your IEPs. Hopefully you've done that, you know, at the beginning of the year, but revisiting them and reflecting like, where are these accommodations in my classroom and how do I use them? And then to go back through and look at some of the resources here and the resources in this support for all learning series. And then also to reach out to me. I would love to work with you to develop accommodations, modifications, or universal design for learning in your classroom so that um, you are meeting the needs for all of your students. Thank you for making your classroom a inclusive and welcoming place for students.